One big thing that that I'm always, always out here talking about, and, and it's this start at the end mentality. It's this before you start win concept. And, you know, I'd like to go a little bit deeper to just sort of lay out kind of the, the layers of why that's important that go a step beyond just being focused and having clear um, sort of goals as it relates to what you want to achieve monetarily, right? It, it ends up being much, much bigger than that when, when you think about it multidimensionally, right? Because as a founder, when you want to create a company, you want to build a business, you know, I say start at the end, decide what you want out of the company in the very beginning, right? You want to build a $10 million business that has uh, 2 million in profit that you split with three other partners and that's the money you're going to live off of, right? Like, oh, I'm, I'm going to build a growth company and my goal is to take on venture capital and grow it to 10 million in revenue and this would be easily acquired for three to four times revenue and then I'm going to have, you know, 20% by the time that happens and that's the money that I'm going to go and fish, for the rest of my life, whatever whatever your vision is, but it goes it goes a little bit deeper when you're making that plan, right? Because um, you know there's this this sort of world where it's like you know as an entrepreneur you sacrifice for a few years to live like nobody else will for the rest of their life, you know, and 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 I don't think that that's ultimately necessary, right? Like you want to sacrifice with purpose um, inside. Uh, your your plan, if you will, on what you hope to actually get out of this business uh, in all aspects. And, and let me explain how, how that kind of works when you're thinking about building a company and what you want out of it, right? It's, it's what do you also want to do in that company? Are you the creative person? Are you the financial mind? Are the are you the operating mind? Right? Like now now it's about the amount of time you want to spend on this company, right? It's it's you making your life plan and your goal isn't like no entrepreneur is like, man, I want to get up at four every day and work till nine and live the rest of my life running the company like that. Like it's not sustainable, it's not fun, uh, and it's not worth it. And it's not something you would ever want to do. If you do that, you have a bad business. If you get up at four and work till nine every night, you have a bad idea. The idea isn't working. Uh, or you don't know how to delegate and or uh, hire the right people to put you in a position uh, to be more balanced. But, but think about the time and the ideal state of how much you actually want to work and what do you want to do. If you're a creative person who loves being part of uh, product development and brand stories and, and marketing stories, like, and you want to work four days a week uh, from 10 o'clock to 4 o'clock, that should be your goal. That should absolutely be your goal because that's when you're working 4 a.m. to 9 p.m. in the first couple years you know that the goal is eventually to transition to just doing what you love to do the most inside the company and with a lot less hours once the company reaches a certain state of maturity. But, but that being part of your plan gives you patience and keeps you going when things get really tough since you know where you're headed. Another um, start at the end concept that you would be using is how you want to spend your time in that company and ultimately what you want to do the most inside that company. And, and again, this would dictate, you know, what type of company that you build, like based off of that, what type of partners you would connect with to build the company with, um, you know, it, especially when it comes to the financial side, you know, really understanding that like, man, in a perfect world, I, you know, I love uh, the fitness industry. And if I could have a supplement company that allowed me to work out every day and work, you know, 30 hours a week and, and have 30% of it and make, uh, 200, 
a thousand dollars a year to live the way that I want to live and be able to spend a lot of my time and my passion of doing, you know, CrossFit on the weekends and Ironmans or whatever it may be. There's a formula in there that you've got to design from the very beginning. And, and it applies to all aspects of, of who you are as a person, you know, and because a lot of times it will even, even I think a lot of people are, you know, mistaking my start at the end mentality for just, you know, build the plan for the giant payday, you know, and, and I think that that's, it's, you know, it is the way that I do it. Okay. Like I, since I walk on both sides where I need the thrill and the joy of co-finding a business and, and doing it at the very earliest stage, uh, so that I can feel the thrill and, and I just like zero zero to me is like where it's the toughest place to start. And it's the most fulfilling when there's success, but I'm still, a venture capitalist. I'm still looking at like, what is the return uh, on my capital? Although I, I will look at ideas in different companies that are really based off of, you know, you know, could be profitable just the same. But but at, in general, now, start at the end is not just about uh, building the pathway to a big payday, because it's, you know, some people, um, you know, may not necessarily want that payday when they start. It might really truly be a passion project, and it may be something that grows over 10 or 15 years that then, you know, they grow out of it or grow to a place where they would like to sell the business. But but understanding that and and building that into your start at the end plan is essential because you, you want to get uh, the business to a place to where it is it it is automated and working and you're doing what you love to do inside that business and you're really enjoying it as fast as possible that's your goal right it's you know finding product market fit and then ultimately getting in a nice rhythm and then doing what gives you the most energy that you enjoy doing the most and then um, you know, being strategic and either investing in growth when you see opportunity or continuing to, to nurture the consumers that you have to continue uh, to build your sustainable business. But it's, it's all of those things ultimately tie back to the type of life and the way that you want to live. And designing that into your overall plan is really what I mean uh, when I talk about the start at the end, you know, and, and, and hey, if it is like I am going to work 4 a.m. to 9 p.m. for three years and get it to 30 million and sell it for 100, uh, more power to you. You know, I think I was, you know, cut from that cloth at an earlier age. You know, I think now for me, you know, it's really... Um, how do you, you know, push everything into this automated state so it's more sustainable and takes less effort and it has more uh, scalability? But I do all of that inside a balanced life, right? And that's because that's what I decided um, was what was more important to me as I grew my business and grew the machine and, and sort of grew into um, you know, the entrepreneur venture capitalist that I am today. But again, to everybody out there, you got to start at the end, you, you got to, to know where you're headed, why you're headed there and figure out as much as possible in the very beginning, because it'll be so much easier for you as you begin to to evolve and unfold into that business idea. And knowing what you want out of it, uh, both time, financially, emotionally, all of these different aspects are going to give you the patience that you need to push through and work hard and sacrifice because you will know that you are headed to a place where it is going to be the perfect business for you the way you envisioned it at the very beginning.